Okay, so this is question two, assignment two. Uh, what do we have here? This is Is that right? Okay. And down here, what was this one? Last one. Okay, there we go. And it's asking us about the reagents. Okay, so there's a couple of things here. Some of this is a little bit of chemistry, perhaps from 2533, but the very first step. Uh, all we're doing is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. We could do this in water and hope the hydrolysis occurs. It would be slow. It might be faster if we just use something like sodium hydroxide. That would work. One of the problems with using sodium hydroxide is what would interfere in this reaction if we use just sodium hydroxide. And it's just an SN2 where the hydroxide will displace the, the bromine. The other thing that could happen is we might get elimination and make the alkene. That might be a side product. Uh, secondary alkyl halides are a pain because elimination is always a potential side product. So if we did the hydrolysis with water, that might be better. We would get less, but it would be a more difficult reaction. Uh, but, but it would have been okay, okay? This reaction, uh, I think he used sodium hydride. What would, if I used sodium hydride, my other product would be H2 and it would bubble away. We could also use sodium methoxide. Perhaps it's strong enough to just pull out that, but it would be an equilibrium reaction. It's not real strong. So we want a strong base. Uh, this is a very strong base and this would work well. Uh, the sodium would just stick around the hydrogen. So remember, whenever you see Sodium or potassium, it exists as the cation. This is the hydride anion. And think about that. Hydrogen with an extra electron in it must be reactive, right? It's got a lot of charge in a little tiny uh, space. So that'll just pull off this proton and make my alkoxide and my sodium cation. Okay. Now, what can I react this with to get here? This is just the Williamson ether synthesis. Let's use some of this. Is that right? It is right, okay. So we would use that. And again, one of the problems here is that one of the side products is gonna be elimination because this is a decent enough base we want it to act as a nucleophile and just undergo that SN2 reaction to form this, plus sodium bromide. This is called the Williamson ether synthesis, okay? This, we're just reacting the alcohol. alcohol. Uh, oh, I did something wrong there, yes I did. We would do, we would just make this, and uh, I'll ask the question in a second. Just use the sulfonyl chloride. 
what are we doing when we put, uh, so this is a really good electrophile. It's got a lot of electron withdrawing groups around it, sucking away electron density, making that sulfur very electrophilic. Electrophilic enough that it will react with this oxygen. Okay, that's the initial attack. I didn't push all the arrows, but that's the initial nucleophile electrophile. So even when you're doing synthesis, it's helpful to think in terms of electrophiles and nucleophiles. Why would we do that? Uh, and in fact, uh, I might use this over here as well, because that's a good leaving group, okay? That's why we uh, install it. We converted our alcohol, and an OH is not a good leaving group, but that is a good leaving group. So our last uh, reaction, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the reagent we would need here, but it's simply sodium azide, okay? N3 minus, And it's a good nucleophile, so we're just doing a nucleophilic substitution reaction there. Okay, so I suppose the question is that I most often get with these types of problems is how do I know what to use? Uh, you just have to take a look and say what's going on here. Here we're replacing a bromine with an OH, so let's. Uh, again, let's not make it complicated. In this instance, maybe we can just use sodium hydroxide and we can, okay? Uh, then the next one, when we go from there to this, we need a base that's strong enough to pull off that proton. Uh, and we want the sodium to be the counter ion for whatever our powerful base is. There are other bases we could use for this, uh, but this would probably be the easiest base to use. You need a strong base because it needs to be stronger than an alkoxide because we're making an alkoxide. And if we used something like ethoxide or sodium methoxide or sodium ethoxide, we would get an equilibrium uh, because those bases are pretty close in terms of how strong they are as bases. Down here, again, uh, we just see what are we doing? We're making a new uh, oxygen carbon bond that looks a lot like the other one, so we need something. Think of uh, bromides. We could also probably have used this thing. What did, uh, let me just go back and see what the answer was to that. Yeah, we, uh, we nailed it. Oh, notice here we used, uh, what's this triethylamine for? That's to sop up any of the acid that's formed, HCl. Uh, we could have used pyridine or something as well, uh, but we need something because the other product from this reaction is that hydrogen and that Cl make HCl, and so we want something to sop up the HCl. Uh, and that's what the triethylamine is for. Are you guys gonna be like really picky if we don't include a solvent, like the question for this? Uh, so the answer would be, if we took marks off, it wouldn't take a while, okay? Uh, it it kind of depends. Uh, I, I typically don't. Synthetic chemists often, solvents can be important. For instance, when you do a Grignard reagent, you almost always want to use a solvent like THF or diethyl ether because you need something that's going to coordinate up that Grignard, okay? Uh, 